Mic test, one, two. I'm recording now. Yeah. Uh, so anyways, I want to talk about the good and the bad of running a YouTube channel. I've been doing this, actually creating videos, uploading to YouTube since late 2014. That's when I first got started. I was making these little vlogs. And back then, I saw it as a way to experiment with my creative side. I was I had day jobs I hated, and I just wanted to experiment with new things. Uh, also, I wanted to get good at talking to a camera. I've, I mean, I've been, I'm the type of person that has a lot of thoughts inside, but it's hard to articulate myself. And I don't like public speaking, so I wasn't going to go that route. So I thought, you know, I can borrow my sister's camera, record myself, and see what happens. Um, turns out I liked more being behind the camera, but I did keep up with my YouTube channel because I... I just didn't know anybody who would hire me to just film, right? So I thought, well, I need something to film. Who do I film? I'll film myself. I'll kill two, two birds with one stone. I'll get better at talking to camera, better communicator, and I'll also improve my craft of uh, lighting and sound and everything that, that's involved. And eventually uh, that turned into, I wonder if I can get paid for this kind of stuff, right? And, and I took it more seriously. So it's been a process for me. Uh, fast forward to... I went full time as a freelance filmmaker in 2019 at the beginning, uh, late 2018. That's when I just said uh, no more day jobs. I'm going off full time and I can make a living doing this. Uh, so now my primary source of income is my freelance uh, filmmaking career. I, I do a lot of corporate videos for clients here in the Silicon Valley. I, I stopped doing weddings last year. So I just focus on corporate and commercial right now. I made a list. Here we go of things uh, about good and bad. This is usually how I do my videos. I I, uh, I have a notepad with the good and the bad, right? Or when I'm reviewing a product, it's like, these are the good things, these are the bad things. So I'm just gonna go off this list because I don't wanna ramble. So first of all, having a YouTube channel, uh, if you build up an audience, which is kind of hard, uh, you know, that in itself, you should be aware that whenever you see someone blowing up on YouTube, that's a very rare case, right? Um, for most people, it just takes a long time to build an audience. Uh, it's been taking a long time for me. I see new people popping up and I'm like, what the heck? How, how did they just come up so fast? Those are the rare cases. Um, so if you're thinking of starting a YouTube channel, do it because you love it, not because you're going to be the next Casey Neistat or someone like that. Uh, you really got to love this kind of stuff in order to keep up with it because it's very difficult to run a YouTube channel. Uh, even a single video takes a long time to plan, shoot and edit. Um, that's why uh, nowadays I just step back a little bit more from YouTube. I used to upload once or twice a week, twice a week when I was just starting out and it came once a week. Now it's like whenever I have time because my full time uh, job or my primary source of income has been my freelance career and that's where I need to devote my most time. The amount of money I make here in a month from YouTube, I can make that in a single day as a freelance cinematographer. So, you know, that tells you that I give priority to my cin cinematography career, especially because I, I love being behind the camera. I want to be in control of the camera. This is cool because I'm, I'm getting to build an audience and people get to know me. It builds credibility. Uh, whenever I am pitching myself to a new potential client or you know people that have worked with me, they know I, ha I make sure they know I have a YouTube channel because I have some somewhat of a following. Uh, they also get to see my face talking about filmmaking gear, which is all related to what I'm doing for them, right? Making videos. And so it builds familiarity. Um, I've also had to hire other filmmakers like myself, you know, sometimes I need help and I'm surprised by how many times a, f a potential uh, filmmaker that, that I'm thinking I'm hiring and I look at their about page and there's no videos of themselves. It's just like a blurry photo and I'm like, I don't know this person, right? So my tip for you, if you're watching this, you're a filmmaker, have videos of yourself talking to camera in your about page or somewhere. That way your client gets to know you. Even if you don't have a YouTube channel, just have some videos of yourself. It's, it builds familiarity. People feel like they know you. Another good thing about running a YouTube channel is that you build up your skill set, especially when you're getting started. I made a commitment when I first got started that I was going to upload to YouTube once a week. Uh, that was a public commitment. Even though I didn't have any followers, uh, that was a way for me to get a video out there into the world. Because if I make a video and then it goes nowhere, then it just feels pointless. So 
through creating your own YouTube channel, if no, even if no one's watching, at least you can make that uh, promise to yourself that you're gonna keep showing up. It's like a weightlifter, they, they have to lift weights. Well, creating these YouTube videos for me at the beginning was like lifting weights. It was me showing up and doing my reps, especially when there's no one paying you to make videos, you need to make videos of yourself, Make uh, find a way to make videos. And for me, YouTube, was the perfect avenue for that. Now, another perk of having a YouTube channel is that once you get to a certain uh, amount of views or subscribers, then companies start reaching out to you. I remember when I first received my first product, I was so excited uh, because I remember watching other filmmakers that were making YouTube videos and they used to mention how they used to, they, they get, got products and all this kind of stuff, this cool stuff. And I was a little jealous, honestly. I was like, I, I, wanna, I want that, I wanna get there. And that was one of my primary uh, motivations when when uh, when I fell down on, uh, well, this this YouTube channel is going nowhere or uh, my my stuff sucks, you know. I'm like I'm gonna get better, and eventually these companies are gonna send me stuff. Well, fast forward to now, I'm declining a lot of stuff that's um, that, that that's being offered just because it, if I compare it to how much I can make from my freelance career, it just doesn't add up, right? Um, it, it might take me a full day of shooting and editing, actually sometimes even more than that. It might take two days or three days just to make a single video that's six or 10 minutes long, whatever it is. Uh, and if this product's only a hundred dollars, it's, it's like, I'm not even making minimum wage. I, sh I should have just paid for it and not made a review and just had my, for my, myself, right? So I'm declining a lot of stuff. Uh, sometimes I am accepting stuff, even though it's gonna take me a long time just because it gives me something to talk about, something to, to share here on my YouTube channel. I can't share everything I'm doing in my freelance career just because when I'm out filming as a, as a cinematographer, I'm really into that. I, I just, I, I, I can't think about other stuff or like, oh, I'm gonna shoot some behind the scenes. I really need someone, hire somebody that does that for me, right? And so I haven't done that, but that's something I wanna do and that's how I plan to continue uh, running this YouTube channel, YouTube channel. I want to show more of my, of my behind the scenes instead of doing gear reviews. I'll still do some gear reviews, but I want to focus more on that. I feel the, the the content that I value the most are the behind the scenes kind of uh, cinematography that I've seen. So I've kind of touched on the bad things of running a YouTube channel. It doesn't pay well, not as good as if you're a freelance cinematographer and, and you're establishing yourself in the business. You can make more from having your own business than than a YouTube channel. You need a lot of views and subscribers in order to make it as a full-time YouTuber here. I am at 40,000 subscribers and I am not at a point where I, I would give up my cinematographer career to go with YouTube because just the, the income is not there. Um, I would need to blow up in order to become a full-time YouTuber. The reason I keep on creating these YouTube videos is because Again, it gives me credibility, it builds an audience, all the stuff I need in order to keep going as a cinematographer. My YouTube uh, feeds my cinematography and also feed a lot of my cinematography back into my YouTube. So it's good um, to, to have both. Uh, however, I cannot rely on my YouTube channel to supply the, the bulk of my income. So to conclude this video, I wanna say that if you are thinking of uh, starting a YouTube channel, you should definitely do it. Uh, just don't think of it as a source of income um, or that you're going to build an audience fast. If those things happen, then great. You, you, you know, if you build an audience fast, more than likely you're going to make a really good source of income. Uh, but that rarely happens. It's the exception. You definitely got to be driven by uh, the love of filmmaking and sharing information. Uh, I know that I'm grateful for YouTube because I've learned like 90% of the stuff I know on cinematography, cinematography has been through YouTube channel. Uh, other people's YouTube channels and I wanted to be a source of that uh, education so that that's why I kept up with it as well so that's it for me uh, thank you guys for sticking around if you have any questions please drop them down below if you have any comments I want to hear from you see what you think um, yeah I'll catch you on the next one <laughs>